Chiang Kai-shek Airport in Taiwan, where a powerful tremor has rocked this island nation. But again, he is alone and running late. Several large international rescue teams arrived three days ago at a nearby hotel. Some of them are already going home. Doug's mission may be over before it begins. No, they don't have vehicle for you. If you want to go, you have to go by yourself. Okay, I understand. You can check with the front desk about I'm car rental. Okay. 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 They told them to get rid of these guys, and they're getting rid of us. But we don't get rid of them. We need a very small car. We have volunteers, so we want a cheap car. Stranded, without government assistance or a volunteer team to help him, Doug refuses to give up. There's still a number of ways of getting all around that. One is that we'll just rent our vehicle, go where we're supposed to go, and then they can bulldoze me inside. And they're not stopping me. In the light of the following morning, the scope of the devastation is clear. Only a block from the rescuer's camp, a 12-story apartment building lies toppled by the earthquake. Sometimes I think what a weird world I live in. I look at a bathroom on a ceiling, and it's normal for me. And I actually feel comfortable in it. Although the official 72-hour window for live rescues is closed, this well-built building contains many voids, and there is still a chance for a rescue inside. Be extremely cautious and don't touch anything. Don't touch anything that's not rock solid. Searching inside a collapsed structure is one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. I've been so frightened you can't even imagine. My fear and my concern is not so much getting killed. It's being pinned with my arms pinned under the rubble that I can't move. There's no one else who knows how to take the building apart to get at me. And rats crawling over me, eating me. And I'm there for days. That's the fear I have. But dying's the easy part. After an hour in almost total darkness, they find no one. But the rest of the team has been working on a nearby cavity where a young girl is still missing. The similarities between Turkey and Taiwan are uncanny. Another apartment building, another young girl. Minutes later, the shrouded body of the young girl is removed from the building. is identified by her family. Despite the similarities, this is not Turkey, with a successful rescue and a smiling young girl. After struggling hard to get here, Doug comes up empty. We need to go to a place that has live people. This is a job you do after you finish saving people. Yeah. Three hours later, Doug has abandoned the larger team and resurrected his mission with a military truck and a small group of Canadians from Vancouver who met Doug at a rescue conference. Don Sherwood is the team's logistics officer. I'd never been deployed overseas before and this was an opportunity for me. We live in an environment where there is a real potential for earthquake, so I wanted to see it with my own eyes. I wanted to understand the scope and potential of what could happen. The road has been open today. We're the first ones in. There's 40 to 50 uh, buildings up ahead, and uh, we'll be going to check them out. The inexperienced Canadians quickly get their first taste of Doug's relentless rescue style. When the road becomes impassable by truck, the team walks two miles in the sweltering heat to search for a missing man in the wreckage of his house. But there is no one inside. Hours later, Doug is pushing the team even farther. 
He has heard rumors that a dozen people may be trapped in a collapsed building in the remote mountains, and he has arranged a ride on a military helicopter. Let's get up all the stuff that's gonna fly and find your song booth, please. But there is tension between Doug and the Canadians. Doug is obviously an experienced rescuer. He's, he's been in the field, my suspicion is, perhaps too long. It occurred to me that the man was perhaps addicted to rescuing. He's addicted to the save. It's an incredibly liberating experience. It's one of the most powerful experiences I know I've ever had. But uh, it seemed to me that he was overly immersed in that and leaving people behind as a result. Um, safety's got to be number one. It's not about heroes. It's not about numbers. It's about doing this professionally and safely. And the two of them go together. As the chopper climbs into the mountains, the devastation from the earthquake is obvious. Downed power lines and fresh landslides scar the rugged landscape. The helicopter delivers the team to the abandoned headquarters of a hydropower dam. But as the helicopter flies away, leaving the team behind, Doug realizes that the rumors that lured him here are not true. There are no collapsed buildings. Look, we thought we were going in to help. Severe life threatening. We have none of that. But there is danger. As a small aftershock sets off an avalanche of boulders and dirt on the surrounding mountainsides, the Canadians quickly become concerned with a potentially new mission, rescuing themselves. We actually had to walk away from where we were standing for fear of uh, just having trouble breathing because of all the dust that was in the air. That pretty much put us in the context of we could die here. <laughs> here we are, folks. So this will be happening all the time, constant aftershocks. It's sliding in every there direction around us. There, 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 that whole place. Over there it's sliding. We're totally in circles. With the dense fog preventing any choppers from evacuating them, the Canadians fear that Doug's constant rescue odyssey may be taking its toll. What can happen for someone like Doug is if he's not taking the time to emotionally heal after each incident, if he's running from incident to incident to incident, it can challenge him in ways that we can't imagine. For a rescuer to not have the ability to emotionally process, then they start to lose track of things like personal safety. It's possible for them to start to make bad decisions because they are not uh, in touch with, with the larger reality. They're only in touch with the reality of the disaster. In the black of night, with landslides surrounding them, the team sends up a flare. But it falls without a response. Any rescue attempt will have to wait until morning. Lowe's is rolling out the red carpet and textured and Berber. Over 7,000 colors and styles of carpet and every kind of flooring you could possibly want will measure.